I was in one wedding where they threw the bouquet and it was like me and like six 60 year olds sitting there. That's the worst when you a grown ass bitch with 60 year olds like trying to catch a bouquet. It's like, what the fuck are y'all doing? <laughs> you six years old, you don't deserve to be up here. You haven't been through nothing. I got HPV, so you all need to sit down because this bouquet is mine. I'm on Weight Watchers right now. Seventh time, seventh time. I mean, we just watching and waiting. That's all we doing. Every time I get on this program, we just like, is it gonna happen now? And it never does. Because here's the problem. I don't want you to tell me to write shit down. You understand? I'm a fat bitch. Just tell me what can't go in my mouth and we'll keep it at that, you know? Don't tell me to write, because I gotta write in a diary. You ever, you know about Weight Watchers? You gotta write down a little diary. You know what I'm saying? I got like 40 points and shit every day. I gotta write it down. I feel like a fat Anne Frank, just writing shit down, looking around, writing and looking. I'm telling you right now, if I was fucking Anne Frank, we would have been caught because I'd have had some Doritos and the shit would have been over three minutes in. Like, what? You hear some crunching upstairs? And put that Dorito bag down. Shut up, nigga. I'm hungry up in this goddamn attic. I get 40 points every day. I got to count them points. I be tight with them points. I had a turkey burger today. That was seven points. No bread, because that's six points. Half a piece of cheese, that's three points. Because I want to suck dick, and that's 10 points. And I can't say to God, listen, don't come in my mouth. I don't have enough points today. <laughs> Put it in this cup. I'll have it tomorrow for breakfast. <laughs> I'm not even ashamed anymore to tell people that I want sex. I want sex! <laughs> I want it, I need it, I need it! And they always go, they go, oh no, oh, these female comics are always talking about sex. That's because we want it! Yeah, I'm gonna talk about it. Listen, let me tell you something. I was 27 years old when I lost my virginity. You hear me? 27! Don't clap for that, that was sad. There's no honor in that. Zelda didn't come out and give me a sword because I did that. <laughs> 27, because my grandmother was in my ear. My grandmother's a pastor. She was in my ear. You better not have no sex. You know Jesus is watching. Like, why Jesus so nosy? Why he, I just want a pinky up there, Lord. Just turn around. I mean, you know how difficult when I had sex for the first time? And the guy called out Jesus. I was like, where, where he at? Get your dick out of me, where he at? Where he at? Take your balls out too. Cause you know Jesus is invisible. I don't know where he at. 27 is too long. It's too long to wait, it really is. Get out there and have sex. You got to, I remember, you see? Cause it was 27. If I had lost it early, I would have forgot by now how horrible it was. But I remember, because it was like it was yesterday, because it was, it was yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Took it out. I had romanticized sex so much, I thought this guy was gonna come in on a white horse and swoop me, like swoop. I don't know why I thought that, because I'm a big girl, so I don't know why I thought he was gonna swoop me <laughs> and him and the horse wasn't both gonna go down. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> damn horse coming. <laughs> Always got these big bitches. <laughs> I had sex, it was fine. It's fine. It was weird. It was weird. But it was fine. It was weird. But fine. Here's what happened. That was the first time I had seen a penis. It's not like the books. <laughs> it's not like the books. This guy's dick was curved. <laughs> Up and over. Up and over. And I was like, I don't know if my shit is curved inside. I don't know how. <laughs> my pussy ain't Tetris. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. Boop, 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 boop.
He was showing me his penis for the first time. And he has so much pressure. You guys put on a lot of pressure. Oh, my man. So much pressure. And then we women go, oh, no, don't have any pressure. Don't have any pressure. Like, we don't have pressure. See, the thing is, guys, they get uncomfortable because they don't know if they dick gonna do what it has to do, right? Right? So you go cut the lights off, turn the heat up, you know? <laughs> but men don't have as much pressure as women have. And we never talk about this as women. We have a lot of pressure when we see a penis for the first time because like no matter what he pulls out, our face can't change. <laughs> right? He pulled out, oh, oh! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Woo! Uh -huh. <laughs> you ever go down on a man whose penis is so small, you feel like you want to fill out a W-9 so you can get money at the end of that? <laughs> I need some money after this. One of my best friends is getting married. I have to go to that fucking wedding. I hate, I hate, I hate weddings. You know, because everybody, they so fucking in love and the shit is bullshit. You know what I mean? All this fucking love shit. I hate love. Ugh. I do, I hate the vows. Because the vows are the dumbest part of a wedding. It's when all the bullshit happens. You know, you see them, they, like, they start crying and shit. Oh my God, you mean so much to me. You're the reason why the sun rises. And it's like, but no the fuck he ain't. He don't fuck me and my sun rise every fucking day. So. I was just a maid of honor at my best friend's wedding and it was like, ugh, girl, please, you know? It's so much preparation for these fucking brides because they want everybody to be like obsessed with their day. I can't, I have depression and I have two cats and sleep apnea. I can't be here for you every day. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I just want to be at the cake testing and that's it. Like, I didn't know there was a whole dress thing. We had to go look at the dress. That is the worst thing. Ever been to a fucking dress fitting with these goddamn brides? They are the worst. You trying on shit you shouldn't be in. You a fat bitch. Don't get no off the shoulder shit, bitch. We all know you look like you could play for the 49ers. So you better get some fucking, some straps up in here, bitch, and tie these titties up because. The last wedding I was in, the, the bitch, I'm like, oh, everybody gotta wear my favorite color, pumpkin spice. And I was like, why the fuck would you put fat bitches in that? We look like fucking jack o lanterns walking down the damn aisle. I'm walking down the aisle <laughs> trying to trick or treat while I get down there and shit. Like, ain't nobody got a Snickers. I hate it. And now I'm the only girlfriend that's not married. So you know that fucking bouquet toss is crazy. Cause it's not even a toss anymore. They just call me to the front and hand me the shit. It's like, well nigga, can we try? Like, could you try to throw it? I was in one wedding where they threw the bouquet and it was like me and like six, six-year-olds sitting there. That's the worst when you a grown-ass bitch with six-year-olds like trying to catch a bouquet. It's like, what the fuck are y'all doing? <laughs> you six years old, you don't deserve to be up here. You haven't been through nothing. I got HPV, so you all need to sit down because this bouquet is mine. Here's my mother's thing. She wants to come visit me. I can't take my mother. Like, I don't want my mother to visit. She was, she visited me a couple uh, months ago. She stayed for two weeks. It was too long, too long. She stayed. I just wanted to show her the city. I wanted to take her out, show her the city, have a good time, you know, find her a man so she get off my fucking back. So, she didn't want to do that because there was a Lifetime movie marathon happening. You understand? My mother loves Lifetime. I, women here that watch Lifetime by a round of applause. Okay. <laughs> four bitches that have low self-esteem. So, um, <laughs> I never watched the network. All I know is their slogan is they're a network for women. So I thought my mother and I were gonna bond over some like women empowerment shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I thought it was gonna be women like cut dicks off. <laughs> you know, like chewing balls and shit. Like, you know, and, you know, free bleeding on the grass. Like I thought, I was like, yo, we got this. Yo, we got to do this shit. So I buckle in, I should
should have known that it was gonna be some bullshit because my mother started knitting during it. And so we watched like 9,000 movies. This all the same fucking movie. Do you understand? The same, all they do is change the bitch's outfit. They don't even change the script. It's just like, put the bitch, same script, just change her clothes and shit, right? So it's always some bitch named um, Amber, okay? That's how it goes. It's a bitch named Amber. And Amber's a small town bitch, and you know this because they start the movie off with a little population sign, and it says 10. And then when the bitch leave, they cross the 10 out and they put a nine. And then now Amber, she's a small town bitch, so they don't, you know, she's like, I'm tired of this. I wanna be a big time bitch. So she moves to New York City, you understand? Cause she wants to be big time. And so this is how she moved to New York City. They put the bitch on like a mega bus and <laughs> they do, they put on a fucking mega bus. She has like a white hat on and a white dress and a little white suitcase with a little ribbon and shit. And she gets off the bus, she's like, I'm here. And it's like, oh bitch, you about to get raped. You understand? Like, <laughs> so Amber works hard. She works hard for like seven years. This bitch works hard nonstop and she becomes a CEO in New York City. And you're like, damn, that bitch is good. You know what I'm saying? She done came here and did her shit, and now she got to go back home, you know, to visit her family and shit for the holiday. They're always going back for holiday. It's Christmas, it's Easter, it's Hanukkah, it's 9-11. The bitch got to go back. <laughs> so she comes back to her home, and I'm just, I'm watching the movie, I'm like, oh, they're going to be so proud of this bitch. This little small town bitch, she done became a CEO. Like, they're going to throw a parade for this bitch. She'll be like, yeah, you done put bippity bop laying on the mat, bitch. She comes back, they barely acknowledge the bitch. You understand? She comes back, they're like, uh, Amber's back. And then they go back to milking cows, whatever the f they do, right? <laughs> so Amber's confused. She's like, hello guys, hi, I'm a CEO. I'm in <laughs> New York City. And like, and she got these big ass shoulder pads because they're not able to show you New York City because they can't afford it. So they just put her in shoulder pads. <laughs> and you know, she walks around like concerned and shit. That's how you know she's making money and she's signing paperwork and just, you know, big times. So she's like, I bet I have shoulder pads, and they're like, yeah, whatever. You ain't got no husband. <laughs> and I started thinking to myself, oh my God, this is not, they're they not going, this is not the narrative of this movie. That this bitch who's a CEO in New York City with six figures of shoulder pads, she ain't doing shit because she ain't got no husband. But that's what Lifetime will let you know. She ain't doing shit because she ain't got no husband. First of all, let me just tell you ladies right now, you don't have to have a fucking husband. You understand? If you make making six figures with shoulder pads, you can buy dick, all right? I'm just letting you know. I'm just letting you know. It's for sale, it's for sale. And, and also, P.S., there's a show called 600 Pound Life. Every bitch on there is 600 pounds, and they all got a man. So if you don't have a man, it might be your pussy. You understand? Like, because these bitches, they can't even find their pussy, and they got a trying to f them in it. So I'm just saying, you might just step your pussy game up. So, now they barely acknowledge the bitch. Amber's so upset, she's like, I, I, you know, I don't know, I don't know. You know, what happened, what happened? Maybe they're right. Maybe I do need a husband. Maybe I do need a man. So she starts to cry, you understand? She's crying and now she's singing because that's what they think women do to problem solve. We start crying and kickball changing down the street. <laughs> And so now she's singing and dancing and all this shit. She wanders into an abandoned building. Well, it's not 100% abandoned because there's a man there, you understand? And you don't get to see the man fully. You just see his ass crack because he's fixing an elevator. And she takes one look at his ass crack and she goes, that's my husband. Okay, let me just take a break because I'm not getting the response I want. And I know it's a lot of women in here and you with your man and you, you're like, uh-oh, here come this women empowerment shit and you sit next to this I don't know what she's talking about. I love making cookies. But you understand, like, the bitch is a CEO in New York City making six figures with shoulder pads and they about to give her the elevator <laughs> Like, they don't do this in a man's movie. In a man's movie, he get like some tall blonde who can't speak because that's every man's fantasy is like some hot bitch that can't respond to his foolishness. But in a women's movie, she get the elevator and now they see that she's in love with the elevator. First of all, it, it, it's only nine people in town. He don't need to fix no elevator. Nobody goes upstairs. Like, so what? He's barely working. So now they take a look at her and they go, oh, Amber, 
This is the love of your life now. You better stay here. You gotta stay here. You gotta give up the shit in New York City. You gotta stay here and be the elevator <laughs> bitch wife. You gotta give up the shoulder pads. Stay here and be the elevator <laughs> bitch wife. And now Amber's like, oh, oh, oh my God. Oh my God, what do I do? Do, do I stay? Do I go? And, and the whole time my mother's watching the movie like, I, is she gonna stay? I was like, Ma, I don't know, but you gotta get the fuck out of my house. <laughs> what? <laughs> what do you mean? Is she gonna stay? Well, this is the love of her life. I said, Ma, she's a CEO in New York City with shoulder pads making six figures. She's not giving that up to stay here and be the elevator nigga bitch wife. You understand? <laughs> she's gonna go back to New York City, and if she wants, she can take this nigga with her, because New York is where all the elevators are. He could be the elevator <laughs> bitch king.